Let's go out front. And good evening. I'm Erin Burnett. Out front tonight, coming in hot. Vice President Kamala Harris stepping into unfriendly territory and doing a nearly half an hour interview with Fox News. And it was heated from the very first moment. Didn't start in like slow and sort of friendly. Nope. From the very first moment till the very end. All right. That was right from the beginning. It was tense. And it continued. At one point, Harris visibly angry. She was railing against Trump and his threat to target what he has called the enemy from within. All right. The clenched teeth, the passion. Harris not backing down from a fight. And, you know, you talk about an interview like this, nearly 30 minutes. There's a reason she chose to do this, and there is a lot at stake, in an election that the polls show to be neck and neck. So the question is, what did this interview do, and did it win Harris any new votes? All right, and everyone is uh, here with me now to to talk about that. So let me ask you about that, Congressman Rose. Was it? What do you think in terms of her doing this? I mean, she went in this eyes wide open. Sure. I mean, so so let's just say I don't know how much time Brett Baer was given in the interview, but he didn't start off with a general question. He started right in on mm-hmm. immigration, and she came right back. I mean, there was no sort of pretense no. at uh, geniality. There was no build up. <laughs> no, no. And, you know, we, we had a fascinating uh, conversation about 30 minutes of interviews. No one thought that the Fox News interview was going to go swimmingly every step of the way. Everyone knew Wait, her answers on immigration. She said, well, Donald Trump tanked the bill. Let's say you believe that. And Brett Baer said, but what about the first two years? Answered. He, he then asked, well, what about your position on supporting taxpayer dollars for gender transitions for those detained, migrants, that is? She said, well, Donald Trump had a similar law when he was stern. She was firm in her defense yeah. of her... So what do you think the point of it was, though? I mean, is it perhaps that she wasn't trying to persuade any voters uh, that she's looking for clips of this to go around and energize voters she already has to show up? I was about to- All right, so, Congressman, let me play uh, to this point, because immigration was discussed for quite a period of time, right? So Brett started off with this, trying to p- pinpoint her on the number of people. Mm-hmm. He went through uh, the horrific stories of the young women who who have were, were killed by illegal migrants. She talked about how, or- how horrible that is, and, and, and she was emoting about that. And then there was this exchange. Let me play it. Okay, there was a sure. pause there. Um, you know, and, and Brett had laid it out. It, uh, it, you know, people in the country illegally could qualify for free tuition, free health care, and driver's licenses. Um, do you think that that sort of pregnant pause mattered, or do you think she recovered well from that? No, that the, there was no pauses in the in interview with MSNBC for an extended period of leader of their own party for doing that. So as we look at this, hmm. right, she took the answer, broke the law coming into our country to give them driver's license, to pay for tuition. When we're to Republicans? No, I'm merely noting. And again, very nice job dodging my point. Very nice job dodging my point. Donald Trump wants the border open. Vice President wants... He wants it open and she Oh, my God. If, if Donald Trump for a second, years ago as a member of Congress, when Donald Trump was president and saw that it was years ago, this okay. was a massive and, issue and, and a massive disaster under his and, presidency and if the as well. Pre- and if the current president and the vice president who's running to be president wanted to secure the border, they would have in the first two years when they had the House, when they had the Senate, they did nothing. All right. Let me just, Lulu, I want to play one other exchange here that... Harris had with Brett Baer about Donald Trump. This was an important moment. I'll play it. Well, stay with me, uh, Lulu, of of course, as well as the two of you, uh, because we have more of our breaking news after this. Vice President Harris was also pressed about her recent comments that she wouldn't do anything differently from Joe Biden. So how is she responding now? Plus, polls just closing in Georgia, where officials say another 200,000 people voted early. Top Georgia election officials telling me that this is just stunning them. This is so much more than they expected. So what is motivating this turnout and who is benefiting? Plus a filmmaker who was at the Capitol on January 6th and has a new documentary about what really happened. And in those 64 days between the election and insurrection, he warns it's about to happen again. To help the breaking news facing down Fox News, Kamala Harris pushing back as Trump has been playing in the culture war over transgender rights. Fox's Brett Baer asked Harris about comments that she made in 2019 that were first surfaced, resurfaced by our K file and then featured in this Trump ad, which declared, quote, Kamala supports taxpayer funded sex changes for prisoners. 
All right, everyone's back with me. Um, this is this particular, some of these ads have gotten traction. Charlemagne the God, who's a Harris supporter, very popular uh, radio show host, he said when he saw that, uh, it gave him pause. He didn't doing football. He games. didn't like it. It was playing during. Mm-hmm. It was playing during NFL games. Um, uh, sure, Michael. I'm curious. You know, her argument there was that um, not to deny. She said, but she said mm-hmm. she can't do that. But was to say, well, the policy was in place, and some people had the surgeries funded by taxpayers while Trump was president, uh, which in fact there were a small group of inmates. So the New York Times has fact checked this. Mm-hmm. Who did uh, request those surgeries and obtain them during Trump's time in office? So. Is this a useful point of discussion? I, I think so. Look, everyone? I will say, first of all, the vice president looked very gleeful when she thought, well, you know, Donald Trump also followed the same law. And she was ready for it. So yes, I'm going to give was. the vice president some credit there. She, she was smooth in how she responded to that question. Oh, Charlemagne's response, you look on social media, a lot of guys, you know, games because they recognize that Donald Trump has a 14, 15 point gap uh, with men voters overall. So you're going to target men voters on an issue that you know for a fact will turn off quite a few men voters. The answer works, what she said. is this sort of uh, throwing throwing stones at glass houses. Yeah, I think that it's a useful pivot. So, and the, I think we all know that if he key, actually knew it existed, point, he would not have been for The key point, it was a very effective answer. She wasn't All right, I, and I want to correct myself because the gender transition surgery was offered while Trump was president, but the actual few surgeries that happened did not actually happen that were funded by taxpayers until after he left office, just to be clear. I, uh, I misspoke a moment ago. Um, it's also not an the, issue that Donald Trump ever raised. Well, during, I, 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 I would they safe to assume probably wasn't aware of it, but I don't know. Probably I mean, not. I, but probably he, not. He's that's a safe now. assumption with most, most matters. Yes, okay. although Kamala Harris was aware. That's all I'm saying. She was aware because she was asked mm-hmm. about it and she sure. answered it. Um, Lulu, the question is, though, you know, we can we can talk about this, but Trump has been, as Harris pointed out, he's spent tens of millions of dollars on ads on this specific issue. He thinks it works. He has put it on during NFL games. Is it effective, Lulu, as you can sort of look at what gains traction and what doesn't. Sure, Michael, I want to play also the exchange um, that Harris and uh, Brett Baer had over Harris's recent comments. I think it was originally on The View Mm -hmm. when she said she wouldn't do anything different than Joe Biden, Mm -hmm. even as, right, she's saying, I am the change candidate, right? So that seemed to be an inconsistency. Um, But here's how she answered that here, and it was very interesting. Let me play. As my presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency, even though she has said she would not do anything yeah, differently I mean, than he has done in the past four years. Can those two things no, both be true? No, I, th- I think it's inconsistent. Uh, either you're going to point and, and of a modern president. I, I don't think she answered it well. Now, I will say this. Overall, Aaron, I, I think the vice president, to your, we, we have been critical that she's not going before adversary. She went, drone. and she went she for went almost a half an hour. For almost half an yeah. hour. I, I want to give credit there. Yeah. And, and I think to Lulu's point, she was strong on the democracy issue, that is what she says she wouldn't do anything differently, but her presidency won't be a continuation. Is that walking the line <laughs> that Democrats need walked? Sure. Right? You're wanna... not disloyal to the person with whom you served. Right. And I want to take this opportunity to compliment Lulu because she's ex- There's absolutely no point here in talking about anything but the fact that Donald Trump, because of Donald Trump, a woman's right to choose is not universal. Imperative that she focuses on that, and that's what she did. Final word, Lulu. Hmm. Final word is actually, I mean, look, they both they both went out with a job to do. I'm going to say yeah. they both did it. Uh, all right. right. Thanks very much to all three of you. And next, the breaking news, another record day of early voting in Georgia. So who is benefiting from this turnout, which is exceeding all expectations, senior election official says to me from Georgia. And inside the insurrection, I'm going to talk to the man behind a new film that documents the 64 days between the election and the Capitol riot and why he says it could happen again. Breaking news, Donald Trump downplaying his role in the deadly insurrection of January 6th, claiming at a town hall that it was a, quote, day of love, end quote. You had hundreds of thousands of people. He looks at the 64 days between the election and January 6th with exclusive and extensive access to the far right Proud Boys group including its former leader, Enrique, because you had spent time with him ever since Trump, uh, uh, you'd been following the movement, but when Trump said, stand back, uh, stand by, uh, you spent a lot of time with them. I just want to start with where we are now with your perspective. How worried are you that the United States could be heading this way again? Oh, I'm swing states. I think uh, we're in for a very bumpy ride coming up. Which is all very uh, terrifying. I mean, you know, Trump, uh, Kamala Harris, say, talked about Trump's role in this. She said if he's president, uh, you know, he'll go after election officials who didn't help him, journalists, others. Right? And this is this is if, if he wins. So we're, I guess, presumably getting through some of this uh, very disturbing 
time period that you're referring to. But she's talking specifically about things he said in recent days like this. Okay, so when he says those things, the question is, what do people hear? And that's why I mentioned that you had been studying the U.S. protest movement, but then Trump famously said, stand back and stand by in a debate to the Proud Boys, right? And then you went and spent time with them. So you, you heard those words, and then you saw what they meant to people and what those words caused. So when you hear these words that he's saying recently, what do the Proud Boys hear? What do groups like that hear right now? Well, I think the Proud Boys being behind bars. Henrique Terrio uh, in 2020, uh, leading into the insurrection, so right before that, you, you had many opportunities to speak with him. You spoke with him. Here's one thing he told you. You talk about the, he is behind prison for 22 years, and leadership of the Proud Boys are. I mean, obviously, there's others in that organization, but you talk about your fear right now of what's happening and what your sources are telling you and where. So, so this is a whole other slew of groups that people are now attaching themselves to? Yeah, I mean, the Proud Boys have real uh, voting centers. You're talking about Springfield, Ohio. Um, but before you go, tonight, Trump called January 6th the day of love, as I led the segment with that. Yesterday, he called a day of love and peace. You were there. Well, I, I think it was the opposite of peace. Network. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate it. Of course, as we said, that documentary now out. And next, worries about Jill Stein and other third-party candidates. When you put it in the context of what Nick is talking about, uh, how much of a threat do they pose and how tight are these states going to be? Could they turn entire states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin away from Harris? A special report next.